You're listening to the Culips English podcast. To download the study guide for this episode, which includes the transcript, detailed vocabulary explanations, real-world examples, and a quiz, visit our website, culips.com. C U L I P S dot com. Hello, everybody. My name is Andrew, and I'm Jeremy, and you're listening to Culips. Hey there, Jeremy. Hey, Andrew. How are you? I'm doing all right. How about yourself? I'm okay, but something a little annoying happened to me recently. Oh no! What was that?、Uh, I got trolled. You got trolled? Yeah, online. Trolled online. Oh,、mm-hmm. what happened? I made a YouTube video, and someone wrote some very nasty comments. YouTube comments can be vicious. Very, very vicious. Yes, that <laughs> is true, and it kind of hurt my feelings. To be honest, hmm. Yeah, I could see that. I think people don't realize sometimes when they leave insulting comments or offensive comments that there's a real person on the other end that has to read these and deal with the consequences of the comment. Yeah, people think that the internet is anonymous, but. That's not the case, right? Not at all. Yeah. Well, Jeremy, I'm sorry to hear that you had this negative experience online, but in a way, I'm happy because you brought up a really great expression just a second ago, troll. And actually, today, that is one of the expressions we're going to cover in this catchword episode. And for all of our listeners that don't know. Catchword is our series where we explain and teach everyone how to use interesting and useful English vocabulary. So today we are going to look at a couple of words that we can use to describe comment sections online. So a comment section on YouTube or you know a news website or Reddit, social media. Anything like this, Facebook, exactly. But just before we get started, I want to let everyone know that there is a study guide for this episode, and it's available for download to all Culips members. It includes things like a transcript and examples of some of the interesting and useful vocabulary that you'll hear today. So, if you want to download the study guide, or even just find out more details about what's included in the study guide, just visit our website, which is www.culips.com. Okay, let's get into it. So, as we mentioned, our first expression for today is to troll. To troll. So this is a verb. Exactly, a verb. To troll. This is the action. The activity is to troll. And in the introduction of this episode, I said I got trolled. Mm-hmm. Meaning, it happened to me. Right. 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 So yeah, somebody、mm-hmm. else trolled, and you were the victim of that、yes. trolling.、Mm-hmm. And so the spelling of this word is T R O L L. T R O L L. I have a feeling that. Some of our listeners are not going to like this word, <laughs> pronunciation-wise, <laughs> because of the R and the L sound inside of it. it. Can be difficult. Troll. Okay, so to troll means 
to trick someone or prank someone or even attack or insult somebody online. And I think the origin of this word to troll comes from mythology. In Western culture, we have the idea of a mythological creature called a troll. Yeah, so in old stories, there are many old stories in Western culture, European culture, that talk about a little monster that lives under a bridge. Mm -hmm. Sort of like a goblin or a gnome is another word, Mm -hmm. similar. Usually they're depicted wearing no shirt, just a pair Mm -hmm. of shorts, and they're kind of overweight and ugly and they have strange hair. Actually, it's like Shrek. Yeah, kind of like Shrek. (laughs) Shrek is an ogre, or we could say he's Mm -hmm. like a troll. And in mythology, the troll lives under a bridge, and whenever someone tries to cross the bridge, he jumps up and he asks them a question, like a riddle, a difficult question that is almost impossible to answer. And he says, if you get the question right, you can cross the bridge. If you get the question wrong, you cannot cross the bridge. So that's kind of what a troll is. So we have this idea of the troll in Western culture, but recently we've been using this word to talk about online activities. It's a little bit of a leap. There's not a direct connection, but we can kind of imagine how it jumped from this idea of a monster living under a bridge who treats people badly to someone online who also treats people badly. Yeah, I think it's because they're hidden. The troll is hiding under the bridge. And online, people are hiding behind their username. (laughs) That's right, Right? their avatar. Mm Mm-hmm, exactly. So maybe that's how it started to be used. And recently, I would say within the last couple of years, I've even started to hear the word troll be used to talk about offline situations, especially with pranking. So if somebody pranks, which means to play a a bad joke on someone, to trick someone, someone pranks someone offline we could even say that that person got trolled. It's sort of similar to a bully Mm -hmm. in school, right? Yeah. Or maybe verbal bullying. Right. Treating people badly, just saying negative things without any good reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, A person can be a troll, Mm -hmm. so it, it can be used as a noun or as a verb. That's right. Like, I got trolled, he is trolling someone Mm -hmm. like that as a verb. Yes, exactly. And I've seen online, some people use the expression, don't feed the trolls. (laughs) Please don't feed the trolls. And we even have the expression troll bait as well. You can bait trolls, B-A-I-T. And we use this word bait to talk about, you know, when you're hunting or fishing and... You use something to attract an animal. Like maybe you put a worm on the end of your fishing hook to attract a fish to bite your hook. This is called bait. So troll bait is when you post something (laughs) that is maybe controversial to try Mm -hmm. and attract this type of negative energy in an online form or comment section. Before we started recording, you mentioned a very good example of uh, trolling uh, with a news agency in Canada. Is that right? Oh, yeah. So this is a story that actually upset me quite a bit. I thought it was really sad. But the CBC in Canada, the Canadian Public Broadcaster, 
They recently had to ban all of the comments from news stories that are related to First Nations or Indigenous issues in Canada because the comment section was so hateful. And there were so many trolls that no reasonable discussion mm. could take place. So because of this, the CBC just banned all the comments. There's like no comments on those types of news stories mm. anymore. That's sad. And I think here, you know, even when people would reply, don't feed the trolls, don't encourage the trolls, it still happens. There was no stopping it. Yeah, I think they are everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I think most trolls are like 13-year-olds. <laughs> Or probably much older. <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 13 or much older. I I don't understand it, frankly. You know, there's so many beautiful and interesting things you can do in life to take time out of your day to write something negative online. I absolutely can't comprehend it, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I always thought They might be people who are treated badly in their daily life and they need a place to to be mean to others, to let that negative energy out. That's what that's what my mom told me, at least when I was young, when people were mean to me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really sad, but it's a reality of the internet. <laughs> so we have to live with it. But for all of our listeners. It's just important to remember what this word means and how to use it. So maybe we can listen to some examples. That's a great idea. Let's do that right now. I've got a date on Friday. Oh, awesome. Who's it with? A girl that I met online. Are you sure it's a real person and not just some troll? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Don't worry about it. Okay, just checking. Have fun. In this example, a guy tells his friend that he has a date on Friday night. Because he met the date online, his friend is concerned that it might not be a real woman, but instead be a troll. So that is a guy who is pretending to be a woman online, or maybe a 12-year-old kid that is pretending to be an adult woman, right? Mm -hmm. This is an example of a troll too. However, in the example, the friend is confident that it is a real person, a real woman, and not a troll. So he tells his friend, yeah, don't worry, it's okay. And yeah, I've heard of this situation happening before. Especially with scams. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of trolls that do email scams. Yes. <laughs> That's an example of trolling. Someone you can't see who's pretending mm -hmm. to be someone they're not. Or playing some prank, attacking people, doing something negative, mischievous online. Exactly. Okay, so Jeremy, let's listen to one more example with this expression, troll. Did you watch the news last night? No, I didn't. Oh man, you missed it then. They got totally trolled. Really? What happened? They interviewed someone who was pretending to be a government official, but in reality, he was just a troll. Anyway, this guy said some really crazy things and the reporter's reaction was priceless, dude. <laughs> That sounds so funny. I'm gonna have to try and find that clip on YouTube. In this example, two co-workers talk about last night's news broadcast. In one of the news reports, a reporter mistakenly interviewed a troll who was pretending to be a government official. When the reporter realized who she was interviewing was not a real official, but just a troll, she panicked. So here we see an example of a real-life troll as opposed to an internet troll. A real-life troll is someone who pranks other people in real life, usually 
pretending to be someone they're not. Right? Exactly. I have actually seen some videos like this on YouTube where a reporter interviews somebody. You know, often on the street, uh, a reporter will just interview random people to get some opinions. And I've seen these situations <laughs> become disasters for the reporter when they realize I shouldn't have talked to this person. They're a troll and it's live news and they don't know what to do. They panic. <laughs> you got to check their ID or something. Yeah, yeah. Check their identification. But it, I, I do have to be honest, it sometimes makes for some funny videos. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree, I agree. All right, Jeremy, we're going to look at one final expression today. And it's related to trolling. And it is another verb, actually. It's to flame, to flame. Flame. Mm. Yes. And to flame is kind of a more extreme version of trolling. Mm. So when you're trolling, you're really almost trying to trap somebody or trick somebody. But when you flame online, when you flame somebody, you're straight up insulting somebody. You're just mm. going to the most offensive language and comment you can leave right away. Well, so the word flame, originally, it can be a verb or a noun. And the noun form means uh, sort of like one part of a fire. Mm -hmm. So if you see a big fire, one of the little pieces of it kind of like one leaf on a tree, would be a flame. That's right. So a candle is a single flame, but a bonfire is many flames, mm -hmm. right? And to flame is that kind of, uh, in, in a verb form, is for something to, to flicker or grow or get big like a fire does. Mm -hmm. So this one is probably used for more negative postings because fire is painful and usually it is related to anger, right? Indeed. I don't play games online, but I know that you can use this expression when you're playing games and you're chatting with other people, right? If somebody is really offending you or... <laughs> telling you, you suck, you're going to lose, you know, insulting you. Usually with much worse words than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, with a little uh, more interesting verbiage, yes. Mm -hmm. Colorful. Uh, colorful, exactly. <laughs> then this is also flaming, right? So you can flame someone while you're playing uh, an online game as well, a video game. Now, is this a little bit of an older expression or is this still commonly used I think it is still commonly used but you're right that I think the young kids these days don't use to flame as much I'm in my mid 30s and I think people my age use this still frequently to talk about this type of situation but I don't even know what you know 13 year olds are using <laughs> these days <laughs> it's probably not to flame but I think it's still okay to use. Everybody will understand the meaning. Yeah, with for our listeners, uh, our intention is to teach you these expressions so you know them. You don't necessarily have to use them, but when you see it somewhere or when you hear someone use this term, we hope that you understand what they mean. Exactly, exactly. All right, Jeremy, I think we're ready for a couple of examples using to flame. Did you get the invite to my party? What party? Oh, I'm having a party on Friday night. I sent out an invite through Facebook. Oh, dude, I quit using Facebook a couple months ago. Really? Yeah, I got tired of all the fighting and flaming I kept reading. So I just stopped using it. In this example, Guy tells his friend that he quit using Facebook because he was tired of seeing all the fighting and flaming online every day. 
So remember that flaming is what we call negative or insulting comments that are made online. So because there were so many toxic comments on Facebook, this guy just decided to quit using it. To be honest, I don't blame him. I've had this thought in my head before too. Ah,、oh, this is just a negative space sometimes. Facebook. Yeah, and like a fire, one thing that is burning can light something else on fire. So the fire can move from one person to another. So I could be having a good day and be in a good mood, and then I read someone's negative comment, and then I start making negative comments. Someone else makes negative comments. And then, like a big forest fire, it spreads, and everyone gets hurt. Exactly. Yes. All right. Let's listen to one more example using to flame. One of my favorite newspapers just disabled the comment section on their website. Oh, really? Why did they do that? Instead of having a serious discussion, most threads just turned into a big flame war. Well, I guess by disabling the comments, the newspaper is trying to keep things civil. Yeah, I think that's the goal. In this example, two friends talk about a newspaper that shut down the comment section of its website. Now, no one can post comments on news stories. They did this because all of the discussion just turned into a gigantic flame war. A flame war is an online discussion. Where the only things that are posted are negative or insulting comments. Okay, this is very similar to the example that we talked about earlier with the CBC in Canada, right? I wonder if that was the inspiration for this example. We'll have to discuss that with the writer of this <laughs> episode. <laughs> Well, Jeremy, I think that about brings us to the end for today. But before we go, I do want to thank everyone for listening, as always. And if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for us and future episodes, feel free to drop us a line. You can send us a message through Facebook if you're brave enough to <laughs> use Facebook. Or you can email us directly. Our address is contact at qlips dot com. You can find more episodes of the show at qlips dot com or wherever you get your podcasts. We'll be back soon with another episode, and we'll talk to you then. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs>